Hello, in this DCS tutorial we'll cover cockpit familiarization for the F-A-18C Hornet. Being both a fighter and ground attack aircraft, the Hornet has plenty of cockpit interface to learn. Set to have an early access release later in 2016, the Hornet is one of the most anticipated DCS modules. Hopefully this tutorial will allow new pilots to skip right to the more complicated aspects of the Hornet when it's released. That's right, in this DCS tutorial we're going to cover a DCS module that isn't even released yet. To cover the F-18 cockpit, we're going to use a series of work in progress photos that have been released over the past few years as Eagle Dynamics has developed the F-18. And uh, some of these are more work in progress than others, so if you see small details that don't look right, uh, those will probably be improved or already have been improved. And not only that, but there are some small details that might actually change. Now, my sources for my information that I'm getting besides just studying the cockpit itself is that I've gone over the official NATOPS manual for the F-18, the A through D models, including the C, and uh, that's mainly my main source. I have also looked at uh, other flight simulators that have covered the F-18 in lesser to greater detail and uh, the various manuals for those flight simulators as well as just a few articles here and there that I've been able to find. Now the organization of the F-18 is actually pretty good as far as the cockpit goes. The cockpits that I am familiar with are generally somewhat organized but you can see some things scattered across the cockpit that are related to each other. And while the F-18 does do this, it doesn't do it near as much as other cockpits do so it's actually pretty easy once you get what each section of the cockpit is designated for and there's even some sections that have been labeled now let's start off with just covering the basic areas of the cockpit before we get more detailed right here obviously in the front of the canopy you have your uh, heads up display or HUD and beneath that this whole front area is considered your front console now Beside the front console you have these vertical consoles and you can see another one here on the other side and these actually seem to hold more important controls that aren't on your stick or throttle in the F-18 such as things related to flaps or the landing tail hook for aircraft carrier landings. Now uh, the other consoles are your right and left consoles and these include any controls that are on the wall of the cockpit itself. So this is your right console, and on the other side you would have your left console, this one right here. And that's overall what the F-18 cockpit is divided into, your front console, vertical consoles, and right and left, which include what's on the cockpit wall. So let's start off with the left console, and starting at the back where the oxygen control panel is, you'll see these controls and since they're toward the side of this picture and this is the best picture I have of this side let's switch to the blueprints or sketch from the NATOPS manual okay and just starting out with the oxygen panel schematic we have a much better view of what's going on here and we have this oxygen on and off switch which turns on and off the whole oxygen system we have this anti-G valve which keeps the oxygen system operating under G's. We have this oxygen test button which tests this 
gauge right here, this oxygen volume gauge, which gives you the total amount of oxygen you have. And besides the different hookups for hoses and things like that, we have these two important switches over here, the mission control, or mission computer rather, uh, switch, which is normally kept in the normal position right here, but uh, you can use it to turn off either computer of the two computers, which basically operate everything computerized in F-18. And then you have the hydraulic isolate switch, which is once again kept in the normal position, but has an override for special cases. So moving away from the oxygen panel, we have some controls for IFF or identification friend or foe. We have some of the controls right here with a radio switch, some controls for the antenna and more right here with cipher switch and more communications controls. As we move on the other side of the communications panel right here we have a crypto switch, a mode switch, and the master control for IFF. In the middle here we have some manual uh, ILS or instrument landing system and we have some preset channel selectors and a switch that switches to the UFC for more detailed operation which we'll get to in a little bit. Right here we have some volume control knobs one for weapon sounds, one for RWR, ECM and another one for TACAN and ILS uh, and that's uh, your tactical navigation uh, volume. Now moving on here we have the FCS panel or flight control systems and we this is basically the fly-by-wire for the F-18. We have the reset button for any problems that are encountered. We have the gain switch, which is basically used to deactivate some of the functions of the fly-by-wire for certain flaps. Uh, we have the rudder trim put here because rudder trim really isn't used that much. And uh, over here we have the engine start panel which has the APU or auxiliary power unit switch that starts the engines as well as the actual engine crank switch for the left and right engines. Above that we have some circuit breakers. Um, some of these are for your uh, the channels for the various flight control system computers. These two are and then you have the speed brake and launch bar uh, circuit breakers which are useful. Then moving on to the fuel control panel, we have some more detailed controls. We have the fuel probe for mid-air refueling. We have these two switches which control uh, how the external uh, drop tanks for fuel for either the wing or center fuselage drop tanks are used, whether or not you let them pressurize and uh, refuel the jet. And then you have a dump fuel switch for releasing fuel. Uh, this fuel control panel actually continues and you can't really see it but there's a switch on this other side of this throttle right here that is actually for controlling the use of the internal wing tank fuel and uh, you can't see that there but that is part of the fuel control panel then moving on we uh, come up to the external light panel which has formation lights strobe lights and the position lights all with their setups two of them having knobs for brightness and uh, there's actually a switch on the throttle that also controls exterior lights over here we have the generator tie control which has a switch cover on it like most things that are for more emergency situations and this is to deal with controlling the two generators for each engine um, if we move on up here we come across the ground power panel which is mainly used for well ground power. Each of these switches have different channels for uh, providing power for ground power to different systems in the jet and uh, that's pretty useful. Now we move on to the other side here and we have actual fire extinguisher switch for the engines. And that's all for the left console. Now let's move on to the right console. And starting at the back of the right console, we have the KY58 secure speech system, which is for the comms. Some of the controls for this can also be found on the comms panel on the other side. We have a mode knob, a fill knob, a volume knob, and a power knob, all for operating it. Uh, 
it's questionable as to whether or not that'll be implemented in DCS or not. Uh, up here we have the uh, another set of circuit breakers. Um, we have two more FCS channels and hook and landing gear circuit breakers. Moving forward we have the sensor control panel and we have the radar knob, the INS or uh, inertial navigation system knob. Here we have a switch for controlling forward looking infrared, a switch for controlling the laser target designator ranger or LTDR, and then we also have one for controlling a laser spot tracker. Uh, off of the sensor panel we have the internal light panel which you can see has a test switch, warning lights, uh, floodlight controls with a knob and switch, um, we have instrument panel, brightness, and console lights uh, just for everything light wise in the cockpit. Um, then we have the ECS or environmental control system and here we have a lot of different things. We have uh, PITED anti-ice and engine or PITED and um, we have the engine bleed air which controls where the ECS gets its air from. Uh, we have a mode switch and a temperature uh, switch and the mode basically changes what or how the uh, temperature control knob controls the environment in the cabin and then we just have a cabin pressure switch for turning that on and off. Uh, over here we have the defog area which there's normally a handle here to control that. Um, it's not here in this work in progress photo. And down here we have the anti-ice and anti-rain switch which uh, you don't have windshield wipers but you have uh, air that will be blown across the canopy to get ice and rain off. Then we have the electrical control panel and on there we simply have the left generator, right generator switch and then the battery switch. And then we have here a little gauge for battery voltage. And moving back to the left side on the left vertical console we have the emergency brake and parking brake right here. We have behind the throttle here there's a gauge for the brake pressure, the wheel brake pressure. Um, to the left of that we have the hook bypass field switch for when you're using the landing hook uh, for actual runways, small fields. We have the landing taxi light for some reason not on the external light panel. We have the launch bar switch for catapult launches. We have the anti-skid switch. We have the flap switch right here underneath this red lever which is the landing gear handle. And then to the right here we have a quick access selective jettison knob and button. A little bit further up above this we have the emergency canopy jettison handle. And moving to the right vertical console we have the FCS cool switch. We have some caution advisory lights. We have a hydraulic pressure gauge. And above that to the right we have the wing fold handle <coughs> right here. We have the hook handle for this is what actually lowers the arresting hook. And then we have a backup radar altimeter 